Today, we've got the Lotus Samira in with us for some serious suspension development. Although the Lotus Amira is a sports car, there's been a few reports back, including this customer, of the car feeling too soft, especially out on track and even pushing hard on the roads. And that's even with the sports suspension specs on this car, which we'll touch on later. The aftermarket is also quite slim with the car being so new to the market. So there's not a lot of options out there for upgrading the suspension. So we got in touch with the guys over at Moton Suspension and we've been working with them to develop a new kit for this car and develop a new coilover kit that we're gonna show you now. The Lotus Amira comes as standard with a passive suspension system. So there's no in-car button like a sport or a, a comfort button to electronically alter the dampers like a lot of new cars do come with. Instead at factory, you spec these shocks with either sport or touring suspension. So this customer specs it with the sport Bilstein shocks. So these are the stiffer offering from Lotus for this chassis, but even this kit is still too soft when out on track. So we got in touch with the guys over at Moton and we've been developing a three-way coilover kit for this car, which is currently fitted up to this Lotus behind us. The Moton three-way coilover kit that we've developed alongside Moton suspension brings in a lot more adjustment into the chassis. So one thing is we've made the spring rates stiffer than standard front and rear. We've also matched that with stiffer damping valving effectively. So the valve inside the damper is matched to that of the spring rate. So we can control the body a lot better than before. As the car before was approaching a corner, it was too soft on the damper and the spring, so it was wallowing a lot on turning, and that transition in the chassis is really unsettling for a driver, and it's not very good for keeping the grip down and increasing camber levels to match that. So what we've done is we've stiffened all that up to keep the car a lot flatter and a lot more controlled through the corners, and also give a lot more confidence back to the driver with the car feeling a lot flatter underneath them. The adjustment on the dampers gives ride height adjustment, and damping adjustment, they're the two main things. So with it being three-way, we've got a rebound adjuster, we've got a high and a low speed compression adjuster. This adjustment means that we can set our high speed compression nice and low, so nice and soft on the high speed, so over bumps, potholes, curbs, the car's gonna respond soft, like more like OEM really, a nice soft road car. But then the low speed adjuster can be set a lot stiffer, so through the corner as the chassis starts loading and the car starts moving through the corner, the low speed adjustment takes over, I can control the chassis and make it a lot flatter and a lot firmer, able to control the weight of the car a lot more. The stiffer springs also mean that under braking, there's less nose dive. It also means that through the corners, the car is supported a lot more and we can run a bit more camber and sometimes a stickier tire as well. So you can get more through the chassis and put more force through the suspension into the chassis and it's a lot more controlled that way as well. The ride height adjustment also means that we can lower the car. So we can lower the center of gravity of the car and we can set the rake angle too. So two main features of how a chassis feels to drive is, is getting the center of gravity nice and low so you don't have big roll moments and also getting the rake angle on the car, especially on a mid-engine car like the Lotus, to get more weight over that nose on the braking, on the turning, to get a lot more positivity and grip through the steering as well. So it introduces a whole host of suspension adjustment, which really means we can fine tune how this car handles and get the balance perfect. We had this Lotus in with us a few months ago and we got the car in a standard, stripped the suspension down, took a look over it, reverse engineered it, and then we took a load of measurements and, and identified the spring rates and what we'd like to see on the spring rate instead. We sent all that information over to the team at Moton Suspension and then they've manufactured this awesome kit that we now fit into the car that you can see here. So all the three corners are completely fitted with the reservoirs fully fitted away. This is the last corner to work on now. So as you can see, the reservoir is still here that we've left accessible so we can show you the adjustment points. So the external reservoir basically means that we are able to have more fluid in the system. That's the reason for an external reservoir. So it means that you've not only got the fluid inside the body, you've also got the extra fluid inside the canister and in the line as well. So more capacity of fluid means that the oil takes longer to get hot so it has a more consistent level of damping because the oil viscosity stays the same for longer. So having those reservoirs, even if they're adjustable or not, always have an added benefit as well. So you'll see that on, on other suspension systems too. They've got a separate reservoir without an adjuster and that is to keep those temperatures low and keep the damping more consistent as the car is used heavily on track. So that's the main reason for those. 
We've also got adjusters here. So we've got high speed and low speed compression, and then we've got a rebound adjuster on the actual shock absorber itself. So one main question that's asked a lot is sort of, I've got some adjustable dampers, but where do I set them to? What's a good starting point? So a good rule of thumb is for road use, for example, you've, you'll have a set amount of clicks and you want to be really in sort of the lower half for road use often. So the, a key thing to look at is, is it a front wheel drive, rear wheel drive or four wheel drive? Where's the power coming from? Where's the engine? Where's the majority of the mass? And then you can start to think about how to set those dampers. So if we have a mid-engine car like this, for example, we've got a lot of weight at the back, the front's quite light, so we can soften the front up to try and get the front to move around that little bit more and just to find that little bit more traction. So it's gonna need help allowing the chassis to move a, a touch more just to get the weight over the tire and help it find the grip. Whereas at the rear, we can afford to firm it up a, a tiny bit more so we're controlling the transition of the mass of that engine effectively at the rear. So with this setup, we'd be setting all the dampers in the lower third of the clicks, but the rear is gonna be a couple of clicks stiffer than the front on the compression. And on the rebound, we're gonna do opposite that. So the front's gonna be one click softer than the rear on the rebound. And again, that's to help how the car is under braking and how the wheel is returning back to the ground to help manage grip levels, especially with this car being rear wheel drive. We'll do another video down the line in more detail on, on differences between front wheel drive, rear wheel drive and, and how to set that. But in general, you wanna be operating in that sort of lower half for road use. And then as we're going up in, onto the track, so this car, for example, is gonna be used on the road, then it's gonna take it to the track day. So what we're we looking to adjust when we hit the track, and that would be firming that suspension up. So we, we like a soft car personally, so we wouldn't be going crazy stiff all of the time because it's nice to have that movement when the spring rate and the valve is set correctly. It's nice to have been in the softer region of that often. And the stiff ones can lead to the car being a bit more snappy and you find the edge of grip faster. So it can be a bit harder to drive at really high speeds and right on the edge, because it's harder to find where the limit of grip is and there's not much warning that it's coming. Whereas a softer car will give that warning in a slower style. So that's quite nice to have as a driver. So when you go head to the track, the main things we're looking for is the high speed compression, we're gonna leave relatively soft because if we're running curbs, that's the same as driving over a pothole effectively. It's still a fast input, a shock input to the car. So we're gonna keep that low so the car can absorb that and it's not gonna upset the chassis at all. But we're actually gonna be firming up mainly the low speed compression. So we're gonna be going two to three clicks stiffer on the canisters all round. And that's gonna make the whole car firmer on track because we're gonna have smoother ground and we're gonna be pushing the tire even harder. So with the harder, with, with the higher speeds on track, we're gonna have more load through the tire. So that's gonna to need to control the chassis as it tries to wallow the chassis even harder when we're going through the corners at higher speeds consistently. So that firm suspension is gonna help with that chassis control. And under braking, same thing, it's gonna really help by controlling that nose. We can also stiffen up the rebound for the same reasons, just to help the car find the grip a little bit better and it's gonna be abused a lot more out on track. So it's just keeping it consistent and just making the whole chassis that little bit firmer out on track. That's the Moton three-way coilovers all installed in the Amira, all fitted up and aligned. So this is gonna go out now and be test driven. And we're gonna have a full article on our website with the test drive included and the before and after comparisons. We're also gonna have further videos and there are further articles on the website just covering damper adjustments in more detail. If you wanna learn a little bit more around that subject, head over to the website. We've got loads of articles on how to tune dampers and how to set them up. Um, so you can read in a little bit more depth over there too. It's all linked below in the description.